Planning Board meeting. This is a regular Planning Board meeting, and it is Tuesday, Mar May 3rd, 2016, and it is past uh, 6.30, so we can begin our formal agenda. Just a couple things here. Uh, there is going to be, under continued public hearings, the uh, Apple Ridge Apartment uh, continued public hearing is going to be moved to the very end of our agenda to accommodate the applicant who is, is coming up from Manchester and called and asked to have this done. So if anybody uh, is here for that, it just will be at, at the very end of our agenda. Um, so the first thing we'll do is, let's see, is uh, our recording secretary is uh, Kalina Graham. And would you please call the uh, roll? Uh, Charlie? Here. Mike Lamani? Here. Jay Tipman? Here. Mike Delavicchio? Here. Will Cantardo? Here. Hamilton McLean? Here. Mr. Hutchins? There, um, two of our regular uh, members are not uh, with us yet, and generally they're here at the start of the meeting. Uh, uh, Don Richards and uh, Jerry. And so what I would like to do, given our chart of, of the alternates <coughs> who have voted in, uh, in the past to equalize out, I would like to ask uh, Michael and Charlie, would you both be full voting members uh, this evening? And given that, we do have a quorum. Could you please clarify which Michael? Uh, I'm having trouble with his last name. Oh, no, 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 it's the other Michael. Oh, the other Michael. Right. Lamonti. So, still Lamonti. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I only make a mistake about three times, and then I eventually learned. <laughs> Not E bones. Yes, he is. But uh, looking, we keep uh, track. I do not, I do not of, of, that. Yeah, yes, I do. Of who votes and uh, who hasn't, and we try to balance it out. But as you know, you participate fully in all the discussions, and your opinions are are important. It's just a <coughs> a fairness thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let's see. And sitting uh, with us this evening is our interim uh, planning uh, director, uh, Brandy Laughlin. And oh, you're all alone. All alone. Okay. Um, presentations. There's no presentations, no extensions. The uh, first under our continued public uh, mm -hmm. hearings is application PL 2015 0138 SP 153 Church Street, proposal to demolish vacant building and add landscaping in its place. Uh, the agenda says it will be continued to June 1st, and would you like to update us as to why? Um, this uh, project, I don't know if you guys remember when it first came before us on Busy Corner there, right in front of CVS. Um, CVS has purchased that building that's on the corner. They're planning to demolish it, and their original application was to put a park in that location. Um, right now, uh, we are uh, waiting to see if that park will be constructed by CVS or if CVS will demolish the building uh, stabilize the land and uh, hand that property over to the city for us to establish a park in that location. So that's still all kind of being worked out behind this the scenes. Is when did they acquire that property? They, uh, I think they closed on it a month or so ago. Oh, okay. Let's yep. I'll try, I'll try to speak a little louder. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <coughs> okay. Uh, so that application uh, will be continued to June. You may or might, may not actually see it. If the property is transferred to the city, um, then at that point it will be a, a city project and you may see it in a different capacity. Super. Thank you. Uh, the Apple Ridge Apartments, that was the one that I just announced we're moving to the end of the agenda. That was continued public hearing number two. Uh, continued public hearing number Three is application PL 2016-0016-SU, Provincial Road, MBL 482-160-1, two-lot subdivision. And at the, I understand at the request of the applicant, it's going to be continued to our June meeting. That's correct. And the agenda says June 15th, but the meeting will be June 1st. <coughs> Excellent. Then we'll move into our public hearing section. 
Uh, the first is application PL 2016-0050SU, Davis <coughs> Place, uh, MBL 426-60-2122 and 412-60-59, boundary line adjustment between the city and a private lot. Uh, does the staff represent that the application is complete and ready for hearing? Yes. Do I hear a motion to accept the application and begin the public hearing? <coughs> I move it. Second. Motion has been made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, raise your right hand. The motion passes unanimously. We've accepted it. Uh, there's who is going to, are you going to speak for the applicant? Okay. Yeah, for the record, I'm Frank Yerkes, uh, <coughs> representing uh, uh, Harry Bean. Okay. And we prepared this plan. Uh, your review. Um, basically, Harry uh, purchased uh, tax lot 21 and he's in the process of completely renovating uh, an older home that was on that lot. And, uh, the city he came before us with that and we approved it and from the appearance he's doing an excellent job. Completely renovating. It's unbelievable. It's like a new house. Um, and Harry, uh, through Discussions with City Council uh, proposed to purchase some uh, surplus land of the city, which the Council voted to uh, characterize as surplus, and they entered a purchase and sale agreement to merge uh, this land with the existing lot. We're not creating any new lots. Um, Harry's already started cleaning the area up, and uh, it's going to be a big improvement, I think, when it's all said and done. Uh, really, I don't have anything else to add if, if I'll answer any questions. Has the uh, city actually uh, transferred that, the title? No, it's pending planning board approval. There's no, they can't, we have to do the boundary line adjustment before they, they can, can do transfer. that. They can transfer it. Yep. But there is a PNS agreement. Oh, excellent. Okay. <coughs> uh, any discussions, any questions of the applicant? And then Brandy? Of the city? Um, yep. Uh, the uh, application um, was complete. Um, the boundary land adjustment will result in lots that comply with the zoning ordinance and our regulations. Um, really, the only thing is a very minor typo on the plan um, that needs to be incorporated as part of a plan revision. Uh, one block number on an abutter lot. Other than that, um, everything uh, is. Uh, good and in keeping with our ordinance and regulations. Excellent. I did forget to announce the that we're opening the public hearing at uh, 635, but we're following the procedure. Any questions of the staff at this time? Any questions from a direct abutter to this property? Would they like to address the planning board on this application? Yes, sir. Could you come forward, please? I'm an abutter. Can I look at the plan? Sure. <coughs> Could you just, sir, for our record, just uh, in speaking in the microphone as to your name and uh, where you live? Yes, Gene Raymond, and I own the pop property on Howard Street, which abuts oh. it. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any uh, taxpayers in Laconia that would like to address the planning board on this issue? Seeing none, then I'll close the public hearing at 6.42. Can I just add one thing? Sure. For, for the record, the, the pins have been set as noted on the plan, <coughs> and we did make that correction after the TRC okay. meeting for Great. the Laconia Housing Development Authority. Okay. So, so on, the, on the final plans, they'll... Yes. Okay. We'll see that reflected. Thank you. Any uh, questions of the board? Then I would entertain a motion. We make a motion that we approve um, this application here. This I'm looking for the number. Oh, the staff report. Um, 
The staff report was prepared by a contract planner that we'll talk about later. Um, so the application number is on the agenda. Okay. Instead of on the staff review. I apologize for that. Curious. So that would be. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, PL 2016-0050-SU. Yes. Okay. With uh, the following uh, completion dates, uh, June, plan revision, June 1st, 2016. <coughs> I guess that's been done. Uh, site security, not applicable. Mylars, July 12, 2016. And completion on May 3rd, 2017. And the conditions are as outlined uh, within the, the report. So that would include uh, two, three, four, be, and four. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Is there a second to this motion? I'll second. Motion has been made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of this motion, raise their right hand. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much. And uh, <coughs> thank you, sir. The, uh, the cleaning up of that area and the work you're doing on that house is uh, dramatically improving the, the neighborhood, and we thank you very much for it. I'd like to thank all of you for your time this evening. Yeah. Well, I don't think Frank is going anywhere. We got him again. He's next again, yep. He's next again, okay. He's up the bat again, all right? Okay, the next uh, is uh, application uh, PL 2016 0055SU 16 Race Point Road, MBL 244 295 8 and 9, boundary line adjustment between the two lots. Does the interim director uh, ascertain that the application is complete and ready for public hearing? Yes, it is. Do I hear a motion to accept the application? Uh, just one one question, Mr. Yep. Chairman. What is the difference between an application number and an MBL number? Um, the MBL is the map block lot. That's right. the tax parcel. Uh, okay. The application number is something that we just assign in-house for tracking purposes. Um, so the staff reviews um, are a little uh, um, not quite accurate right this month. We're working out some kinks right now. Um, so when making your motions, please refer to the agenda for the application number. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, it's always better to include more information than, than less. True. You can always refer to the MBL as well. Okay. So did we have a, a motion to accept? I'll make the motion. We accept the application. Is there a second? <coughs> second. Thank you, Charlie. Motion is made and second. Any discussion? Seeing now, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. It passes unanimously, and we can begin the process. And I will open the public hearing at 646. Even I can learn, Kalina. Uh, and will the applicant uh, please come forward? Again, my name is Frank Yerkes, representing Stephen and Ann Wainwright. Um, the, uh, the Wainwrights bought this home. Uh, the pool and, and concrete patio area were built by a previous owner. And uh, they bought the home uh, without the benefit of a survey, it closed on it, and, and the abutters, the Vicinas, uh, bought the lot next door and I guess brought a consultant in to see what they could do with it. And at that time last year, it was discovered that uh, this encroachment situation existed. So the intent of this plan is to clear up the encroachment and do an equal trade uh, between the two lots. So the areas will be the same after the adjustment as they were or as they are presently. Um, the frontage remains the same. Uh, the, uh, the existing conditions are all shown. Uh, the Vizina lot next door is an empty lot. Uh, so we're, we're really just uh, going through the, the exercise here to get this, uh, this matter cleared up. Do you know how long the pool had been there? I don't know exactly, to be honest with you. Um, but it, it was there prior to the, the Wainwright's purchase. Couldn't have been earlier than the 80s when they built it. Yeah. In the 80s it could have been? Whoa. <coughs> so I like going down that hill, Frank, uh, in that area at the race point, <coughs> you know, on that hill on the left-hand side. Is that this property? 
Could you describe that? Well, as you go up Race Point Road, yeah. before you get to the cul-de-sac, okay. it's on the left. Okay. And if you and if you continued past the oh, it's property, right on that corner. I see. All right. Well, it's not really on the corner, but well, it's at the cul de sac. The, the condominium, Fern, Ferncroft condominiums are next to the Vizinas. Okay. And the cul de sac is here, and the mm -hmm. turnoff for uh, Bay Hills is right here. <clears throat> you can't see that pool from the road, can you? No. Oh. Okay. No, it's completely private. Okay. Any other questions to the applicant, uh, staff? Um, the uh, boundary line adjustment results in no change to the square footage to either lot, no change to the frontage. They both still um, meet our zoning requirements uh, as a result of the boundary line change. Really all this does is rectify um, the uh, encroachment issue and uh, um, gives a, a clearer situation for each of the property owners. Um, there are actually no plan revisions that are required um, as uh, a result of um, what we received, so we would recommend approval. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, just a question. Uh, when you say encroachment, was the pool actually built on the other lot? Yeah. The so portion of the pool that's shown on the plan was, was <coughs> onto the other lot. Now, is there is there a requirement for a certain setback for a pool from the property line? Ten feet. Yep. Ten feet. Yes. So you so the lot line adjustment will allow for that ten foot. Yeah. If you look on the plan, we've got a dimension there. It's ten. Ten, ten, ten feet and change. Got it. Uh, okay. And and for the record, we've set the Sorry, pins uh, as noted on the plan. So. But they have okay. room to build the house. Good question. Well, he's willing to do it. So. Okay. Uh, are there any direct butters that would like to address the board on this application? <coughs> are there any other taxpayers of the city of Laconia that would like to address the board on this application? Seeing none, then I will close the public hearing at uh, 650. Uh, is there any general discussion to take place before we uh, ask for a motion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion on this application. I'll move uh, application PL2016-0055SU, um, the uh, lot line adjustment uh, be approved subject to uh, number one, project completion deadlines, A, plan revision June 1, 2016, B, site improvement security not applicable, C, Mylar final plans July 12, 2016, and D, completion May 3, 2017. Number two, plan revisions none. Number three, uh, other conditions A. <coughs> and number four, conditions for final approval. Uh, A should be, I don't know if you strike it. He said that the monumentation had already taken place. Let's yeah, I wouldn't strike it. I would just Okay, so it. It, uh, A through A, B, C, and D under number four. Excellent. Is there a second to this motion? I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say raise your right hand. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, hope this doesn't happen very often. It's, it's, it's not good to have things like this happen. No, it was pretty. Um, <coughs> Pretty clear cut though, and Frank did a great job figuring out how they could fix it. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> thank you. When something like that happens, when there's an encroachment like that, obviously there was not a building permit issued for the pool. There may have been. Oh. Um, and it was not followed up on correctly, or you know the installers didn't you know put it in the right place. We may not have required a survey afterwards. Sometimes so, we do. So after the fact, if a if a part of a structure was constructed without either a permit or a follow-up certificate of occupancy and then it's determined after subsequent sales that that structure was encroaching or was illegally constructed, what recourse does the city have? Can they have that part of the structure removed? In this situation, that was a zoning violation. Um, it would be like a zoning violation because it's From the, in because the setback. Of the set, because of the side yeah. yard requirement. As far as the setback, now as far as the portion that uh, went on to uh, mm -hmm. someone else's property, at, like that part would be a, a civil issue. But not, not the lack of a certificate of occupancy. Um, a pool wouldn't require a CO. Oh, no? No. 
even with electrical and plumbing and all that I stuff? mean, it would require some kind of final sign-off, but I'm not quite sure. Mm. I think it was old enough that, um, that not, to be honest, the records probably weren't complete for us mm. to be able to track down exactly what happened. That's where I live. Well, back in those days, <coughs> the, mm. the boundaries were sort of fuzzy, I guess. It's back. going to sound self-serving, but it was it, the, the permit was issued without the benefit of a survey. Okay. Uh, that's, what I'm, right. that's what I was... Uh, I know they had to go back and do a lot of lots it back does, in the yep. day. Right? Yeah. And was there an ass built at all with that? You know? Okay. Not that I'm I'm aware of. Okay. No. okay. Well, there okay. would have been for the house. But yeah. Probably, probably not, not for the pool. And well, there, there, there wasn't, a there wasn't an ass built for the house. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. Well. Okay. Let's live and learn. I remember uh, the days they say between those two telephone poles, but the telephone poles will be off. Remember? Well, yeah. <laughs> the third uh, public hearing <laughs> is uh, application PL 2016 0004 SU uh, Amendment 1. Yes, Amendment 1. Uh, it's for 93 and uh, 109 Weirs Boulevard, MBL 277-248-7 and 8. It's a boundary line adjustment. And uh, will you um, ascertain that the uh, application is complete and ready for Yes, it is. Uh, given that, uh, I'd like to ask for a motion to accept the uh, I'll make, application. I'll make a motion that we accept the application. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Excellent. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, raise the right hand. Any opposed? Motion. The application is accepted. And I am opening the public hearing at 654 and Good recognizing the, uh, the applicant. My name is Ron Johnson. I prepared the plan for uh, 109 Weirs Boulevard Trust. <coughs> we were here in March of this year. Uh, to get an approval, <coughs> we did get an approval for boundary line adjustment uh, between 109 and 93 Weirs Boulevard. Uh, it's the uh, Rich Haven Cottages and a single family property next door, both owned by the same individual. After we set the corners for the adjustment over here, he wanted more of an, a, a buffer between the cottage colony and the, and the, the two <coughs> other cottages on the private residence property. So we moved the pin five and a half feet. And he hadn't sold the cottage colony oh, yet. Yeah, oh. It's still for sale. Um, it, it amounted to 83 square feet difference, and we still maintain the two acres on the cottage colony property. So we're back in front of the board uh, for an, an amendment on the application to swap that 83 feet. The small residential lot is getting an extra 83 square feet, and the cabin colony is losing 83 square feet, which really isn't anything in the big wash, but so there it is. Okay. Staff? Um, so the the change is, is really minor. Um, it wasn't something that I felt that I could approve administratively given that subdivision and boundary line adjustments have to be approved by the planning board. Um, so uh, it's here before you. Um, it's really just a matter of giving them, uh, I, as I understand, a little bit extra room so they can get around to the other side of a stone wall for maintenance purposes um, and still stay on their own property. Um, on the staff review, um, under plan revisions easements we have actually received uh, those drafts as required um, so when you make your motion you can uh, strike those if you choose um, if you want to leave them in you know that's fine I would just note that that uh, that has been satisfied that requirement has already been satisfied though all those all those easements we did receive them. Is that between two is all this the same owner or two separate owners mm -hmm. He's, he owns both properties the same owner okay yep. Should you have the documents in, in the application? We do have them, yep. We have them in our file here. Yep. Okay, all right. <coughs> okay, Excuse me. then, uh, us, any uh, Director Butters that would like to address the board on this application? Any uh, other taxpayer of Laconia that would like to address the board on this application? Seeing none of either, I will close the public hearing at 6.57. Any general discussion that would like to take place before? And I'll ask for a motion from the board on this application. We we'll make a motion that we approve this application, and it's PL 2016 0004 SU. And with the following completion date deadlines, uh, easement plan revision for the easement June 1st, 2016. There's no site improvement uh, required. Mylar July 17th, 2016. 
and completion May 2nd, 2017, and, and the conditions that are within the, the, uh, the, the uh, application here. Uh, I don't think there's anything in here that's exceptional. So. Okay. Is there a second to this motion? Second. Motion has been made. Second. Any discussion? See, now I'll call the question. All those in favor of this motion, raise your right hand. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. The uh, application uh, PL2016-0056 SP55 Growth Road, Lakes Region Dog Park uh, is to be continued until June 1st at the applicant's request. Is there anything further that we should say about this or uh, do you need more time? No, um, actually, we thought we had a very full agenda tonight, <laughs> um, and we advised them I'm that. Here. <laughs> I don't have I don't have a full staff review. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, we could move forward, but I don't have a staff review for you guys. Okay. I can give you I can give you like a little overview. I'm, I'm waiting for if I'm waiting for John anyway on the on the Alpha Do you guys want to hear a little overview from John? You need that dog park. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe John can give you guys a preview. Yeah. Why don't you come up and, and just give us a brief? This it, doesn't violate any. Uh, Look into a conditional and then based upon um, why don't we do this? Why don't you guys accept it? Right. You can open the public hearing and then you can continue it to June right. to take that vote. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you okay. is the application It is. In then would I have a motion to accept the application? I'll make the motion we Is there a second? The second it. Motion made, second any discussion? See none, I'll call the question. All those in favor to accept? Any opposed? So we have formally accepted the application and we will open the uh, public hearing and first ask for the applicant. Uh, John Rokey. Oh, at, oh, at uh, 7 o'clock even. Okay. <coughs> uh, John Rokey, Rokey Consulting on behalf of the uh, Laconia Dog Park and uh, the City of Laconia is actually the applicant because it's uh, the parcel is owned by the City of Laconia uh, Parks and Rec Department. Uh, we have gone to City Council they have they have vote, actually voted to accept everything and move move things forward like there's an agreement with the city council for the dog park uh kevin mclaughlin is working with uh with jenny martin and the other and the other people to uh get all the agreements and the rules and the insurances and everything in place uh the the site plan itself i don't, I don't have anything in front of you but uh to put in front of you but um it's off the end of growth road like it's kind of an industrial complex down there you go down growth road there's a power there's a dual set of power lines that run right off the end of growth road uh, what I did is I have a driveway that goes just past the power lines and then I opened it up into just a gravel parking sp parking lot and uh, there's there's uh, can be a toilet uh, like a porta pot there's going to be a dumpster there's a little walkway probably it's probably like a 40 foot long walkway that gets over to the fenced in areas and they're actually they're actually doing it different than what you would think they would do with a dog park like it's not actually going to be like a graded level site um, they're going to clear some trees through like thin the trees out a little bit within the area but for the most part it's going to be a natural area that the that the dogs can run around like in the woods basically so there's not a lot of grading within the within the fenced in area we're just basically going picking a good path and it's going to be a meandering fence around through the woods uh, and then there's going to be a divider in the center so smaller dogs can be on one side bigger dogs can be on the other side and then there's a, a third pen which is for puppies but um the drainage it's it's in kind of an old gravel pit area I've had Peter Shower go out and do the wetlands, so there's we know there's no wetlands on the site. I had designed it for just an infiltration basin where I where I sheet flow the parking lot off into the infil infiltration basin, and uh, I have had the driveway all goes to the infiltration basin also. And I actually had over designed it a little bit when I I, I was trying to get everything in for a deadline and. Uh, I realized when I ran the drainage calc said it was way oversized and nothing even came out of the pond so one of the things I'm working with Luke Powell is actually backing the size off a little bit making it smaller but um it, there were very few comments with TRC everybody was everybody was pretty happy with it conservation uh, Luke Powell was fine 
Um, there, I think everything was fine with assessing, but that was mostly just for butter noses. Um, all in all, I mean, we have most of the stuff taken care of. I just got to, I cleaned up a couple of the notes. Okay. Like I, I had a couple uh, uh, things where I had, you know, plagiarized the plans from another project and I just needed to make sure all the stuff jived with this particular project, which I've already taken care of. And just a final pawn size to Luke Powell and uh, it should be ready for approval with almost no conditions, so. Well, just was this before us or yeah, the I was going to say the applicant so organization did come before us for a conceptual plan review. Yep. It was just Correct. conceptual. Yeah, yep. That was yep. conceptual. It was yep. a very good discussion that they had began before they began the whole project. Yep. I don't and think at that I, time they these pens were going to be left as natural as no, you're no, not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was more uh, it was more of a like squared off thing where I think it was going to be more grassed and cleared and things like that, but. Um, they're modeling it after one in Enfield, I believe, is the one that they're Vermont, that they've right? been using. Vermont. No, Enfield, no. New Hampshire. Okay, I thought there was one in Vermont. They were over to. up by Lebanon. Okay. And this is going to remain a seasonal. It's a seasonal park, or will it be open uh, all year round? It's if they can be open year round, they're going to try to. But there's there's a lot of maintenance issues with the plow plowing of the roads and parking and everything else. They do. They did get a grant. I think you probably saw it in the paper. They got a. I think it's a hundred thousand dollar grant or a donation from uh, a local person. Fifty thousand of it is to construct it, and fifty thousand is like a trust fund to like oversee maintenance going forward in the future. So, uh, will will it continue to be a city? Recreational yes. facility. It's still it's still, still going to be owned by the city, but it's all the maintenance and all the insurances and everything else are taken care of by the dog park. It'll be. So. Um, I mean, the way it's been established is somewhat similar to what they've done for the Wow Trail, um, where they've got the nonprofit that kind of came up with the plans and the money, but it's city property or it will become city. You know that kind of thing. Okay, yep. so, so not quite city, exactly the same, but ultimately yeah. the city stands behind it. I think we had to get resolved back then was the parking for that, didn't we? Uh, yeah, what did that turn out to be? Uh, what's your final plan? Well, the park, the parking on the concept plan was right underneath the power lines, okay. and there was uh, I think Jenny was going to try to meet with Eversource, but they there was like no way we were going to get a joint use agreement to have all the parking right underneath the power lines. Right. So I just extended the road out past. I, I kind of redid the cons. But how many redid. cars can get in your impact zone? Well, What's that? But how many vehicles can get in your impact? Uh, I think it's like 19 spaces or 20 spaces. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's decent, yeah. decent sized parking we'll lot. We'll have we'll have the full plans for you guys yeah. next month. Yeah, yeah, I'll have I'll have the whole the whole thing for you guys. But uh, I was waiting anyway, so. Um, and I'm still waiting. Still waiting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so well, then, uh, why don't we? Um, Let's see, we should have a vote to continue? Mm -hmm. a yes. Vote? Yeah, probably table. Could I have a vote to continue this uh, application until our next uh, meeting, which is on uh, June something or other? June 1st. First. First. Yeah. Uh, I'll move that. Yep. Motion's been made. Second. And, uh, motion made and second. Any discussion? See none. Call the question. All those in favor? Thank you very much, John. We'll look forward to this. No, it's a, it's a neat project. I'm <coughs> glad to finally get it to the end for those guys. Excellent. Uh, uh, the uh, the next is uh, an application acceptance. Uh, it's for P application um, PL. Uh, sorry, you skipped the public hearing about the wetland. Oh, buffer. did I do that? Mm -hmm. Number five. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It, uh, no Freudian slip intended. Um, the next is uh, revisions to the back language of zoning ordinance. 235-17-E to wetlands and uh, water quality ordinance. This was the present follow-up uh, in a legal format uh, with the uh, presentation that was made at our, at our last meeting. Uh, who would like to speak to this? Um, I can uh, just point you to um, in the packet that you have on page three. In red is the language that is proposed to be added to the ordinance. So under um, what we have right now is within is it says I'm sorry um, water body buffers are defined as all land lying 
and then number one which is in place right now within 75 feet of the following brooks Durkee Brook, Jewett Brook, Blatt Brook, Langerly Brook, Mellinger Brook, and unnamed brooks designated A through I in the official zoning map so we're going to add that to water body so it would read the way we would interpret it water body buffers are defined as all land lying on number two we'd add within 30 feet from the top of the bank on both sides of intermittent and perennial streams these streams are shown on and will correspond to the latest version of the United States Geological Survey map which is what was discussed and presented last month <coughs> excuse me excellent um, well we did spend a considerable time on this at our last meeting um, what this will do, what our vote will do, is to uh, approve this change and send it to the city council for their approval. And the city council may or may not uh, conduct a, a public hearing. But I believe at that city council meeting, a presentation similar to one that we heard would be made if they elect to hear that. Yeah, I think I'd have to work those details out. Um, but. Yeah. But yeah, they certainly would. It, it has to be approved by City Council. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Given that, do I have a? Is there any general discussion before I ask for a motion? Yeah. Did you? Okay, yeah. Should I what? It's a public hearing. Oh. Really? Okay. The public hearing will begin at uh, seven oh nine. The applicant. Uh, we have discussed that. So, are there any? Uh, uh, taxpayers of the city of Laconia that would like to speak to this ordinance change. Uh, seeing none, then I'll close the public hearing. Oh, thank God. Uh, 710, the clock moved. Uh, then at this point, we can, uh, we can ask for a motion. Pam, would you like to make the motion? Sure. A <coughs> uh, move that the... Uh the revisions that were made to the proposed zoning ordinance chapter 23517-E number 2 wetlands and water quality ordinance uh, prepared by the conservation commission i believe right yes. conservation commission uh, be approved and presented to the city council <coughs> for their review and acceptance is there a second to this motion i'll second it motion is made and second any discussion Seeing none, then I'll call the question. All those in favor of this motion, raise your right hand. And any opposed? Abstained. And one abstention. Excellent. The motion uh, passes, and it will move to the uh, City Council. Now you can do the application acceptance. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, application <coughs> acceptance uh, for PL 2016-0054SU Shore Drive, Lexington Drive, MBL 382-199-5, subdivide one lot into three. Is this application uh, complete and ready for our processing? It is. Then would I have a, a motion to accept the application? <coughs> so moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion is made, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say raise your right <coughs> hand. Any opposed? Any abstentions? No? Nope. Excellent. The motion passes unanimously. And that will, uh, when will that come before us? Next in June, do you think? Uh, it should It should come, uh, barring any delays, uh, June 1st. Okay. Under. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, well then let's back up then. Let's go back here then. Uh, this is a, we'll reopen our continued public hearings. And this is application uh, PL 2016-0015SP amendment. A provincial road uh, MBL 480-350-4. It's Apple Ridge Apartments. And their uh, application is for a waiver request for underground utilities. We need first to accept the, uh, the waiver request. 
is uh, we ascertain that the application is complete and ready for public hearing. Yes, it is. Thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the uh, application? I'll make the motion. Is the there a second? Second. My motion is made. Second. Any discussion? See now. I'll call the question. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. We can mm -hmm. open the uh, public hearing, Thank you. which I do at uh, seven thirteen. Okay, and would the uh, applicant like to address the board? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. My name is John Cronin. I'm an attorney down in Manchester with Cronin, Bisson, and Zelinsky, and I'm here on behalf of the applicant together with John Rokey, who I'm sure you all know well from his uh, projects in the community. John, is that different than what you submitted already? Okay. Okay. Uh, I've been doing land use and planning and zoning work for approximately 30 years. I have been to this board uh, some time ago, but not in recent years. And I'll just open by saying these are the types of meetings that I don't like to go uh, to. I feel in some respects uh, from my youth making a trip to the principal's office because I like to come and do things uh, affirmatively. Uh, and here I'm kind of in play on a, on a reconnaissance mission after the fact. Uh, we were not involved in the initial <coughs> approvals, uh, but we're called upon by Mr. Roki and the applicant when issues surfaced regarding the overhead power lines. I've reviewed the site plan, and I know the regulations uh, call for all underground utilities. Uh, in this particular project, as it was being developed, um, those of you that are familiar with the site, you know going down there, there's a large series of overhead lines throughout that neighborhood. Uh, low levels, high levels, but it's a pretty intense uh, development with overhead lines. As you go down to the end of the street, Eversource, the power company, is supposed to drop uh, their last pole, and then we're supposed to pick it up and take it underground according to the regulations and the site plan approvals. Uh, I can't say for sure why it happened and why someone didn't contact the planning board first, but it's my understanding based on communications with Eversource and a letter that's been uh, submitted that Eversource made the uh, executive decision on the site uh, to add another pole to bridge the wetlands. Uh, they brought it a short distance that's over a small wetland <coughs> uh, that sits you know, on the upside from uh, the bypass highway. Uh, ran it over the top, and then it came back into the ground. Other than that small stretch, uh, the entire site is otherwise underground. Uh, so we're talking about a very small area of land in which uh, the wetlands were bridged. Uh, my belief is that if they came before you uh, in the original site plan proposal, and Eversource was here and say, hey, this is the way we want to do it and the only way that we can do it, uh, you probably would have granted the waiver with some protections uh, for the wetland. I did attend uh, the TRC meeting. There were a number of comments and concerns. Uh, naturally, people were upset about it, and I don't blame them for that. And it seemed to be the, the, the large amount of concerns <coughs> was due to what they anticipated would be repeated problems of the wetland or its buffer to maintain these lines. There was a concern now that they exist overhead that there'll be an annual or semi-annual effort to get into the wetlands or the buffer to trim back trees and so forth. Uh, we've had Peter Shower go out there and take a look at it. That's not the case here. There's probably no maintenance required of anything there probably for 15, 20 years because the path on which these wires are overhead is a pretty clear sluiceway through where there's no trees or overheads uh, that are in the general vicinity that will need some trimming. Uh, to the extent that sometime in the very distant future they will, uh, that can be done without negative impacts to the wetland. Mr. Shower in his report uh, additionally makes some suggestions of some plantings. Uh, to uh, fill in some of the area. He uh, calls for a couple of species of plants to be added into the area. Uh, and I think he renders his opinion that uh, states that there would be no material and negative impact to the wetland. Uh, when we look at it, you know, from the consequence of it being happened, and if, if you had hindsight and had the eraser to go back and do it, you know, I certainly would say, or if I was called upon, before Eversource does it, if you have any control, uh, would you at least let somebody at planning know or get back before the planning board before you do it? Unfortunately, I don't have that eraser, and I'm looking at a set of facts where this is done. Uh, my visual of it, when I look at it in light <coughs> of the area, it's a pretty remote site. 
you know, bounded on one side, you have the bypass. And these overheads are really not visible unless you are really looking for them. Uh, coming down from the access road, these overheads that exist now that were put in are so inconsequential compared to the array of overheads that you have throughout that neighborhood. I think when you look at it and if you can put to the side your mind that the, the pre-approval wasn't requested, I don't think it really distracts from the harmony of the neighborhood, the aesthetics, some beautiful buildings that are there. Looks nice. Uh, you know, it's a kind, kind of a remote lot that there's been what I believe is some attractive development. Uh, so for those reasons, uh, we would ask you that you uh, look favorably on the waiver. We did go to Conservation Commission. Uh, they also shared some concerns about the process. Uh, I get it. I understand it. But I think when they evaluated everything based on the perspective of the impacts to the wetland, the aesthetics, the fact that all of the other utilities throughout the site are underground, underground uh, they went ahead and they would support, uh, either support or not object to the waiver is probably a better, uh, better way to look at it. I'd ask John if he wanted to add anything that uh, thought would be relevant or helpful. Yeah, essentially it's the, this entire request is <coughs> for the single pole. Uh, it comes off the, the, the photo sheets that I put together, <coughs> like the lower, the lower corner, this is coming down from Enkel Road. It's like the overhead power lines coming out of <coughs> Enkel Road. The next one is the last pole. This is actually the last pole on Provencal Road, and that's where it makes the turn, and it goes to the single pole that goes across the wetland. And you can see from that last pole that Eversource set, we went underground immediately after that. So everything else within the development is underground exactly according to plan. There's light bulbs all over the place. I mean, everything's underground within the site. Even though this pole is only maybe 45 feet away from the building, they went underground and underground over to the building from that pole. So the moment Double D had control of the site and the, and the utilities, they did everything according to the site plan. Everything is underground. Um, we our initial our initial submission we had we the conservation at, we went to TRC the conservation commission was voting against it like saying that they they didn't they didn't want to recommend it that's why we had Peter Shower go out and take a look at it and yeah, suggest some plantings and I went back and actually talked to the conservation commission and tried to you know garner some support and you know try to get try to get things uh, smoothed over a little bit so to speak and. Uh, the letter that we got from them is basically saying, why, why didn't you tell us ahead of time, but now that it's done, the fact that you're putting some stuff in, thing that, that's going to be low, low growing and not going to affect uh, maintenance in the future, this is probably the best solution for the, for the process. So what, what are the poles? There's one 40, about 45, 50 feet from the building, right? I'm following that blue light. Where's the others? Uh, I'm trying to see. The this poles one all come all come down from Enkel Road yep. to this point right here, yep. and then it goes to that single pole. Just from here, uh, from there to there. Just that's on it. one pole. That's the that's the entire waiver. Yep. So you, the, the big the biggest reason why it's why it's a, a big deal is it went over the wetland. It went over the wetland in the buffer. So there's no pole the on reason, the reason why they uh, the let me just hit, let me just yeah. Okay. So that there's only one pole that's in the, in this area here, okay. and this the other end is outside over here. Some what is that the other, other pole? The other pole is all the way down at the all end, the way right off, right okay. off the end of the road. Right. Okay. And the reason the, if you if you read the letter from uh, Eversource, um, this goes back all the way to the uh, Holden Engineering approval that was given uh, in 2006, 2007. The original approval, anyway, for Apple Ridge before it went into the whole CLNM cycle and everything else, um, Eversource was saying what they had shown on their plan could have never been constructed because the way the underground was showing going through the parking lot, it was making a 90 degree bend, and they're like, you can't install underground at a 90 degree bend. Who had done that original plan? Holden. Holden. Yeah. And I, I had gone through after after the fact because when it went into the CLNM thing, like all the permits expired, everything everything was gone. Uh, Phil Burliard was doing extensions on it, but he hadn't extended any of the state permits. So what I did is I went in and up, had updated the uh, updated the AOT permit and left basically the, all the other utilities as is. And then we had come back to you and got the new approvals when Dick became the owner. 
uh, to get going on construction, but all the utilities, everything was just being carried forward, not knowing in the back, not knowing that Eversource was eventually going to look at it and say we can't construct what you're showing us. So, so according so. to the according to the letter here, Eversource is saying that they put the extra pole in. Yes. So they didn't have to go before DES and delay the project. Yes. So it was okay with Eversource to violate the planning board's directive not to put the pole there, but to go completely underground. So they basically, th Eversource thumbed their nose at the Laconia planning board. And they're not even here to defend you guys? <laughs> no. That's pretty bad. No. We're, we're, uh, we're on the hook for it. I mean, it, we're it, trying it, to... It took a lot of work. If, if you know how much work it took to even get a letter. No, that was difficult in and of itself. Well, you know, and I also I got a question: Who's managing the project out there? Is the owner of the project the developer? Is he doesn't have full time supervision to see Spot, what's going on? Spofford Construction was on site. Uh, Spot, they, they were the people that were they were the site contractor, uh -huh. and uh, Art Rose was over is directly over them. Like he's the general manager of the site. So nobody was there to I, supervise I that construction. Don't know, I don't Couldn't know. Have if, taken uh, place I don't know day. if they were out there and Eversource said this is what we're doing and you don't have a choice. And they, I, I don't know. Well, it couldn't have taken a day. It had to take several days. I know. Okay. Are there any transformers on that pole? What's that? Transformers on that pole? No, are there, any there are not. Just nope, there are not. <clears throat> um. From now that we're kind of now that we've been dealing with this, I've been hearing from Scott. But, but you can say whether this is true or not. But this is becoming a theme in Laconia that they're that EverSource is kind of doing. Which what they which want. Scott? Scott McPee. Okay. Because we have uh, trees are coming down all over the place by EverSource, but it sounds like Northern Pass. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, we have uh, heard from Eversource. Um, they were communicating with Scott Myers, the city manager. He reached out to them. Um, my understanding is that it, during this time period at some point, there were some staff changes at Eversource as well that may have added to the confusion uh, on their well, part. I know, I know for sure Sid Barton was <coughs> one of the guys that was originally with PSNH when uh, the change when the change was made over to Eversource and it was not long after that uh, that he was that he was gone from Eversource um, that's actually a double thing too because uh, he was involved I think Sid Barton was involved also with Lilac Valley the poles on Lilac Valley because there's two extra poles at Lilac Valley too from Eversource which we will at some point see we have yep. a request for yes that's the next. That's the next thing. I'm dealing with two of them, actually. Um, so, so our understanding is that um, there, the you know the the staff changeover may have contributed to, you know, whatever happened uh, with EverSource. Um, that being said, um, it is the um, it is the responsibility of the applicant to ensure that their approved plans are followed. Um, but this is what we this is what we have, and what you all have to make a decision on. Would you explain the uh, <coughs> included for the uh, planning board a copy of our uh, regulation? Could you just highlight <coughs> the Sorry. responsibilities and authority of? Do you this want me board? to give my staff my whole staff recommendation now with that or? Yeah, would uh, other gentlemen have joined us? Yes, let me introduce them. Uh, this is Mr. Dick Anagnost. Good evening. The principal Welcome. of the developer. And, and Mr. Scott Schubert is here. He's also with uh, the development company. I don't want to rehash, but uh, we talked about a little bit about the history. Uh, Mr. McLean had some questions about who was on site. I think John handled that and how this was able to happen. We've talked a little bit about the disconnect with Eversource and the changing of staff and how this materialized. And we wish. We could have an eraser and go back in time, but we can't, and the impacts are relatively modest. If you wanted to add anything, uh, you certainly could, or if you had any questions for Mr. Anagnost, he'd be happy to entertain him. How much is built out on the project right now? 
the entire project is built on. Entire project. A building B is already occupied. Building A will be occupied in June. And B is the building for the uh, Lakes right. Region Community College. Correct. Yep. They're using it as a dormitory. Yep. And that building B is the one that this poll goes closest to. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we continue? Because if the board has uh, questions, we can ask them anytime. Sure. At your pleasure. Uh, Thank you. Would you then give the staff uh, report? Um, so the staff report that you have in your packets uh, was drafted in. Uh, February for the March meeting as you guys know this has been continued for several months um, as things got uh, sorted out and information was gathered um, the information we have received uh, since the time we put the packets together and today um, included the plans uh, that actually delineated what the actual effects of um, the failure to come and request a waiver prior to uh, are um, the photographs we just got tonight um, and at this point I would say that the um, actual resulting effects of the overhead power lines are um, fairly minimal um, while I do you know believe that they certainly should have come and talked to us um, our site plan regulations uh, state that changes in utility locations as may be required by field conditions because we know it happens there's a provision in our regulations for this um, subject are subject to written approval of the relevant departments um, I, I really think that that's clear that they should have come back to us and, and talked to us um, however um, on page 25 of 30 which I gave you guys um, it speaks to utilities being installed underground um, and the last sentence is the foregoing requirements shall be imposed at the sole discretion of the planning board and so um, that right there tells you all as the board that you do have the right to waive that requirement if you feel um, that the the need or, or is sufficient um, I think that the end result of the of the power lines being overhead as opposed to underground um, is not ideal but I don't think that uh, visually or um, the impact on the wetlands or the site is really um, hugely uh, sig significant um, but it is at the discretion of the board to um, as to whether or not you grant the waiver after the fact now if you don't grant the waiver um, th they will have to go back and, and try to uh, install them underground I don't know if they have a contingency plan for that 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 you can ask them but can I ask a question? Sure. So if they had to put them on the ground, they just would go around the wetlands? Is that how that works? Well, works? I mean, there were a couple different ways they could do it. The, on the approved plans, the, um, the proposed route for the utilities <coughs> was shown in red. Yeah, it actually, the, the proposed route, it actually came down in, this This was the area where it got, where the Eversource said they couldn't, they couldn't <coughs> make the bend, is this turn right here because there was all the other utilities in the ground also so there was they storm done? drainage and everything else so what would they've had to do to make up for the bend they would have had to go right through them they could they couldn't have come through the parking lot no matter what they, they would have had to either start over like try to figure out how to get through the pond they would have had to do an open cut through the wetland and the buffer or they would have and if they and if they have to do all that they have to come back with a amendment to the application a site plan amendment CUP for effects uh, but, to the wetlands and the right, buffers. But I'm, I'm just asking if they're going to cut through the wetland yep. what's going to be the most harmful to the wetland doing all that or leaving the wires where they are S certainly impacting the wetland directly would be more harmful more negative yes yeah. okay yep. yeah, because nothing nothing on the ground has actually been disturbed the trees have been cut off but they weren't stumped like nothing was pulled out so like the actual ground has not been disturbed at all by this and they weren't Special trees, they were just trees? Just regular trees and okay. in the book. Thank you. So why did we require it in the beginning to begin it's with? It's part of our site plan our requirement. Plan. Understood, but we have the right to waive it. Yes, we do. They but didn't ask to waive they it. They didn't Their ask plan to waive it. Included um, utilities being underground. And the On site, they right. made a field decision to change that. Well, the, but the only field decision I see here in the letter from Eversource is they did it so they didn't have to go to DES for a permit. And delay the project that's the only reason they gave that's the only reason they they gave in that right. letter 
That's it. They didn't say, they didn't give us an explanation. They couldn't do a 90 degree bend and pull, when they're not able to pull the cable through the conduit. They didn't give us any reason. They basically said, we didn't want to go to DES and get a permit. I think it was pretty apparent, at least to them and others, that that wasn't feasible. That letter came at, at our urging, you know, at our request, saying, you know, we need you guys to step up and say that this uh, was your decision. And what they're talking about, if they wanted to trench through those wetlands, they'd have to get DES approval to do it. But, but in spite of that, it still looks like trenching through there would have caused more harm to the wetlands. Right. And that was the original design. And that was we approved it, and they agreed to it. So six. I, I got that. Angle, I got that. I think yeah. it was the original design. I think, it, it, and it, really, it's not my my concern is not uh, the developer. Sure. Now, granted, if in a perfect world you would have had proper supervision on the job, so when the job was being constructed, your supervisor would have said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, wait a second, that's contrary to our site plan. I can't let you do that. I got to go to the planning board." That didn't happen. Mr. Chair, may I speak? Yes. If I may address that, sir? That is exactly what happened. The contractor contacted the Eversource people, the direct contact that, that he was dealing with. Uh, because I didn't have the benefit of being here, do you mind if I just take a minute and give you a little bit of history as I understand it? No, no, it's important. Sure. So, um, this was actually brought to light, but it was brought to light at the time that they were doing it. So we put in a work order to um, Eversource and we submitted all of the plans as approved by the board. Eversource began bringing the power overhead down the road and changing all of the poles out. Brought the um, sector box for building A. We laid all of the underground utilities from the sector box to the um, building A, which went in first. Then they went to deal with building B. At the time they moved on site in building B, They'd set the first pole and the second pole and made the cut when we were notified by the contractor that Eversource was on site and that they had taken a different route than what they um, proposed. Mm -hmm. The contractor called the Eversource contact. He came to the site. He met with the general contractor. And I know because they notified me by telephone that afternoon that the proposed route was not viable to them because they couldn't make the 90 degree turn and they would have had to locate the second sector cabinet inside the the prime wetland okay the eversource person who's retired who we've been trying to locate made the representation to the contractor that there was an actual job meeting that the town was present and that this had been discussed Okay, so being the developer that I am, I took at face value that it had already been discussed with the town and that it had been accepted by the town. Lo and behold, less than a week later, the contract is providing me with a letter from Shana that says we went into the wetlands and cut without being getting the appropriate permission from the planning board and that we didn't have permission to um, bring it across that route. Now, Maybe it's unbeknownst to this board. I've never faced this any other place. But we can't direct the utility. The developer cannot direct the utility as the route that it intends to take. The, direct, the developer brings you the plans, attempts to um, meet the letter of your regulations. You guys approve it. We give it to them. We pay the money. OK? Then <laughs> the, the, the um, utility actually makes the decision as to the best route to go. And I had this conversation personally with Shana where I take it from wherever they leave that final sector box, okay, and I bring it underground from that sector box. And they left the sector box at the end of the pole at the end of um, Provencal Road, and we brought it to Building A. They left the sector box beneath the pole that transverse the wetland, and we brought it underground from the, that sector box into the building. I have no control over whether the Eversource can bury their lines as much as I have no control over Northern Pass burying the lines from Canada all the way to Deerfield. Okay, it's the same issue. We have no control over that whatsoever. They're going to make that decision. They made that decision. They represented to us that they had cleared that decision with the town. Okay, so if, if it was fine with the town, it was fine with me. It wasn't until a week later that I was notified that it wasn't fine with the town. So I'm here 
doing mea culpa and falling on my sword in front of you and asking for a waiver post it occurring. But the information that I had to make a decision at the time was the fact that it had been cleared with the town and that this is the only way that Eversource was going to put it in anyway. So I don't know if that gives you any additional history, but that's the position that we've been put in. We're in a rock and a hard place. I, I, honestly, I sympathize with you. I sympathize with you. Um, I'm still not. I'm still not happy that we're going to have to give you a waiver because Eversource does not prefers not to follow the rules. Candid me, Mister. Didn't even have the courtesy to show up here. Didn't have the courtesy to provide a letter explaining that. Candidly, Mr. McLean, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yeah. As unhappy as you are, do you think I'm happy standing here asking you for this? No, I'm sure you're not. Okay. I'm sure you're not. Well, I'm I, think, I think my mind goes right to the power company. And if they <clears throat> take poetic license that way, I mean, and I understand where you are coming from. They're like the technical gurus on that component of your project. And if they think they want to do something, then, of course, they're going to hopefully advise you or advise the city. Now, I wonder how many times this can occur in the city, in our projects. And if they continually do this, then I think we become lame ducks here. So, not nothing against you, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I think that you are correct in what you did, <coughs> or what you didn't do, or whatever they told you to do. But I think we have to figure out how we're going to work with this power company or other entities to make sure that this is not uh, uh, done in, in this manner. Now, I think that that is there any way that we can put a vehicle out there or a mechanism or something that they now have to do? In other words, leave it up to them, but they now have to apply for any variance rather than just go ahead and um. do it. That uh, we I don't know about. Isn't it, is it, is it the tricky. job of the developer to get, or, or whoever is doing the work, once public service tells them to do that, or they're going to change something? Isn't it their job to come back to the city and say, "According, hey, to, according, to, according to him"? No, so I understand that. that. I, okay. I understand that, but in, in the future, it should be. still, right. that's what I <coughs> because I don't see EverSource sending people. I mean, EverSource is kind of doing what they want for the development, and then. Yeah. But I'm sure somebody from Eversource probably did talk to somebody from the city. Could have been somebody who going by in a yellow truck. Could have been but also yeah, been anybody. Yeah. But also what I heard is there's another project out there. <coughs> and a similar impact I heard that. situation. I heard that. So this becomes so who knows who they were talking to. They to can we just for to address this issue, say would this board approve this had they come in for a waiver? Prior to like so, work. let's let's say they did it the correct way, and if, and if that's know, if the case, provide, and you if, would have if approved they the waiver, the then I say we make a motion to approve that. Right. If they gave if they gave the rationale, yeah. they couldn't put it underground because they couldn't pull the wire through the conduit through a ninety degree bend. Okay. That's true. You couldn't put, you couldn't straighten it out. You couldn't eliminate the ninety degree bend. Okay, I can yeah. buy that, but th th for the arrogance of not even responding. Mm -hmm. That's that's I, what I, I and I, this I is not about the developer. Correct. This is about the power company, and I don't know. Right. We can't hold the developer right. responsible, right. but there's got to be something <coughs> we can do with it. With well, perhaps that's we, that's we can discuss that. that. We need to have Jay's a discussion been, uh, about that another time. Yeah, Jay's been asking. Set a precedent, precedent by doing this, because if we do, we will have to do it every single time. But there's not do yeah. something so we don't set a precedent. Mm -hmm. There's always a risk. Any decision that we make that they could be influenced the w with the authority um, vested in, in this board though we do look at all evidence and, and we can make a singular decision like this and, and and there is something that that we could do and we could direct that the uh, the city send a letter to Eversource indicating our displeasure and that we uh, there are city regulations to be followed and that they are to contact us whenever there is a change in a uh, an approved plan. I think that that's they, are, they are a monopoly yeah. well, and as a monopoly they have to they have to work with the municipalities that uh, they supply. Yes Charlie. Or maybe maybe the developer just needs to see something in writing whenever source says they talk to somebody in the city then maybe they need to see something <laughs> writing to prove that. 
instead of just taking it at face value. Yeah. Well, that that can be included in there also. That uh, EverSource needs to uh, needs to. Uh, uh, have a direct communication with the city and the developer needs to ask for proof of that yes yes so but that's well the communications after, but that's would still after the fact right yeah. uh, I, no I, no, I, no I, going yeah. forward it's going forward in fact in someone future. decides they're going to do it they, they 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 get the writing of it and they just go ahead and do it you know what i mean because they said they had a meeting and they, well, and the, they informed the, or whatever and the guy quits so whatever happened to well that's why <laughs> retired <laughs> that's why we need as a city to send to eversource a position that uh, they are not to do this and so that it is in writing and that when there is a change to a plan that they w are asking for they come back to the planning director and then the planning director decides does Ever it ever source does or yes ever why would ever source do that it's it's right. their problem they oh, it's, it's really both but but we have we have many many applicants right and ev ever source is a monopoly mm -hmm. right but ever source is doing this on their behalf so they say, hey, we're making it, you got to make a change, and here's what you have to do. And then they've got to come here and say, hey, here's the change. But something. If we'd have been notified, Charlie, that there was a change that was going to be made, I understand that. We would have taken the appropriate action. Of course it would. Secondly, the, the, the real salt in the wound is here. I paid them to do this. Yeah. They charged me to put me in this position. Okay, the first check was $39,000 and the second one was $28,000. They actually charged me to put me in this position before you tonight. Welcome to the club. <laughs> um, anyway. So we can, well, we, we should first decide, I think, <coughs> on the uh, granting of the waiver. And then secondly, we can uh, discuss and uh, direct the, uh, the city through the planning department to send what we want sent to uh, to ever source and where's the other one by the way where's the other one that did this they did this uh, uh the second project is lilac valley yeah. um, off of 107 yeah uh, now, now, let's. Yeah, I, we don't have. Well, an no, we can't discuss that. The, we do not have an application before us. Different circumstances, different people involved, and, and we'll need to address that separately within the uh, construct of the application. Uh, did did the power company just just for my own understanding? They added a pole. They did. So they obviously must have thought about this in advance because they didn't bring extra poles they would have had to go and get an extra pole yep. and all the associated equipment dig the hole set the pole uh, so it had to be a, a day or two anyway. all of that stuff was on site was on site they had just brought all the poles down the road they were but they had extras and they took them away they took away extra poles they took away extra wire they took away extra oh, they, so they had more than what they needed that brought all this su to supply the job already Okay, that's what happened. They came to the end pole, and then they set a new one to jump over, and then they set one on the other side. And, and you know, Mr. McLean, I understand the, your, your concern about the letter that was generated by Eversource, but I have a fine esteemed attorney here, John Cronin. I had meetings with your town manager. I had meetings with Eversource. Your town manager is the one who was actually able to solicit something in writing from them. They wouldn't even give us anything. And the guy that retired, I asked for the address, I asked for the phone number, and they denied me access to the guy that was in charge of the job, their own supervisor, who's retired in Florida somewhere now. So we tried to prepare just to come to this meeting and ran into roadblocks. <coughs> it wasn't until your town manager intervened on our behalf that we got anything from them. It's unconscionable. I think the issue is what it is, not you. No. I, I mean, I hear you clearly. I mean, they should, <coughs> there should be a vehicle outside of you that we like can get in a network, approve, agree, disagree, whatever we may do. Yeah, we, we need but to be I think, uh, But in your case, I, 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 would, I would support the waiver and uh, get, uh, get you on the, a positive path here. Thank you. Are you making a motion, Bill? No, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> the rules of the planning board are that we ask, are there any uh, direct abutters that would like to address the planning board on this application? Are there any other taxpayers of the city of Laconia that would like to address the planning board on this application? Seeing none, I close the public hearing at uh, 746. Is there any general discussion before I ask for a motion? I have a question. Yes. If we set this precedent, are we going to be faced every single time to go back to it? Who knows? Who knows? I, I think there are enough. Well, what do you think there are enough that? individual circumstances in this case that we're fulfilling our direct responsibility to analyze the entire situation and make a judgment call. You know, will 
some, will any decision that we make come back claimed as a precedent? It, it could. But in, in this situation, uh, and enough has been presented by the applicants and their full professional team, and it is on the record, that uh, I, I personally, and I'm only one voter, but I personally don't have an issue with the fear of precedent setting. Well, the, the, I, I'm not so much concerned about the precedent of someone coming in after the fact, such as uh, the, the applicant, <coughs> and asking for a waiver because something was done wrong by the power company. It's the precedent that we set with the power company. That's exactly what we're talking well, about. Well, all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah, why, why don't we first resolve this waiver request and yeah. then discuss the, uh, the action that we collectively want to take with the uh, power company? I, I make, can we make, is there a motion yes, sir. In, in order? It's in order. All right. So I make a motion that we approve this waiver. And that would be, which one is that? I can't read that. Uh, it's uh, this one here. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's number two. I got a different two than you. You're on uh, like this two? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know why. They have to write in special instructions oh, they give you for the, all the chairman. Special yeah. stuff for you. Okay. To tell me uh, the things uh, that I forget. Oh, uh, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's number two. <laughs> it's two, but so that's a different two. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, would uh, make a motion that we approve this waiver request and uh, with the thoughts of uh, moving forward with the uh, power company in another way to s head off these problems. But the application is PL 2016-0015 SP. And I don't really see the amendment. And I don't see anything on the amendments. Well, it, it, it is an amendment to the application. Okay. Are you looking for conditions, Bill? I'm looking for them now. I, since I moved my paperwork around, it's hard to find them all. Yeah, I think that's it, right? I'll make sure I have the right one. We took it out of sequence, and then uh, yeah, mine. Is it the one uh, still March first? That's okay. right. This one. Um. Yes, here it is, Bill. I would no, I would that. So that's uh, staff review. Um, For yeah. Mm -hmm. That staff review does not recommend approval. So I would say that you, if you want to make a motion, you could say you recommend approval. Um. And just has one thing clear. Yeah. Well, if we conclusion. recommend approval, we override the staff recommendation yep. by that approval. And I think you can refer to, <coughs> where is that? You can refer to just condition six. And if you want to refer to, you guys didn't um, discuss the, I'm sorry, I forgot to bring it up, but the Conservation Commission um, requested conditions about replanting and treatment in the wetland buffer. And at, I was at that meeting personally for another subject. I wanted to review <coughs> the Black Brook project. And the applicant, through his representative, made a commitment to plant and maintain the plantings uh, through that uh, wetlands area underneath the pole. And he, uh, in, in doing that, he met the uh, and got the recommendation of the Conservation Commission for that plan. And that's in here? Those, uh, those, uh, those the plantings are all low growing stuff, which will which makes it even further maintenance free going in, going forward. So. It's not in here, but it we is. We don't in have the a plan for all that, so I don't think I have to say that. But I, I based on the agreement to do uh, yeah. uh, plantings and uh, low impact, I guess on the on the environment, uh, I would recommend. And there's a project completion date of April fifth. Is that correct? Um, I would change that to um, revision. That is. Plan revisions June first. Which is April fifth. Yep, I would change that. That's okay. A mistake. And were we changing that to June first? June first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it was a mistake because this was originally done for March first. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. And that would be my motion. It. And it includes uh, as built plants. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But we as it is stated here. All right. Is it, a questions out of out of order? Uh, let's have a second first, and second. then second. motion has been made and second discussion. discussion. Yes, sir. To the applicant, uh, did you say that the building is occupied? Building, the, the building serviced by the service that we're talking about is occupied. It is um, leased out to the community college, and their um, students and RAs and staff are currently so, occupying the building. So the, the building is powered, and it's occupied. 
Yes, sir. Okay. So you felt confident enough to occupy the building? Well, they gave us a certificate of occupancy. They're, they're kind of... Even, the, even though the site plan was in violation? Yeah, there are two separate issues, we believe. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it was a temporary CO or... Yeah, it is. CO. It's a TCO. Okay, it's t so it must have been temporary based on <coughs> going through this process and the outcome of it. And you still have one building that's not occupied yet, so we're still in the process. Yeah, so the worst that could happen if we denied it, they would have to shut the power off rerun the lines and then bring the power back on it's not unusual for us to issue temporary co's while while things like this get worked out and not that we come across things like this often but um while they finalize conditions or um you know landscaping or drainage or things like that um so right. yeah a temporary co is not unusual just so the project can keep moving so how's the power for the other building where's that going to go do you know it's it's already in and it is underground <coughs> They actually placed the power for building A first. Okay, I see. Okay, and all of our wires <coughs> are underground. The the overhead lights, the powers to to the building, and even the power to building B from their sector cabinet is underground. The issue that you have is from the end of the roadway jumping over to wetland to the sector cabinet is the issue at hand. Yeah, all right. of the stuff that we were to install is underground. Excellent. I can almost see it transpiring over there, you know? But that's my motion. Okay, the motion's been made, <laughs> seconded. We've second. had discussion. No, we. Okay. So, motion's been made, discussion. We had discussion. Then I'll call the question. All those in favor of granting the waiver, raise their right hand. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And we have all learned a great lesson here about dealing with Eversource. Well, thank you very much for your time. And listen, I apologize to make you stay here late in order to hear this kind of an issue. Oh, this is very important. The development which you have done has made a significant improvement to the city of Laconia. And the arrangement you have with the community college is enhancing that as an educational opportunity that's very, very important to us here. And uh, ap apart from this issue, I know I personally know of no others, and nope. congratulate you for the uh, the uh, the two buildings that you did put up, and uh, would encourage you to buy other land and put up more buildings. <laughs> We're working on another one. We'll be back to see you. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. I'm Thank you all. I will be back to see you on another power poll. So. <laughs> So why don't we discuss then, um, uh, General? I would recommend that any discussion um, of any interaction with Eversource go under other business at this point. Oh, okay. If that's okay. Uh, it's fine with me. We're not going to forget it. Uh, where are we on this agenda anyhow? New business. Uh, new business. Uh, it was indicated here that the uh, retained corporate counsel for the city wanted to discuss possible upcoming project procedures and he has indicated that he does not want to do it at this time yes he will probably be back to talk to you guys possibly June possibly July there's some other timelines that we're working with um, uh, but but he w could not make it tonight after all and I understand uh, unofficially that this is in relation to the uh, city parking garage a specific project not uh, in a general what we have uh, what we do under our site plan approvals then old business uh, we don't have any old business uh, planning department reports um, the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the bright pink sheet in your packet um, the planning board meeting was originally scheduled for June 7th it will now be on June 1st which is a Wednesday it's an off night for you all um, Wait, what? But I will not be here on June 7th, so we need to move the meeting. Well, then the director should be here. I don't know what is uh, well, the assistant director, right? going to be happening no, at no. that point. So um, as a contingency plan, we just moved the date just to ensure um, that we would have staff here for you guys. Excellent. Um, the second thing I want to talk about um, is... Um, first, I want to thank you for your patience as we muddled through a couple of the staff reviews. Um, we, uh, as you know, are a little shorthanded down in the planning department uh, with Shanna having left. Um, and if you weren't aware, we also had Christine Snow. She was our zoning technician. She retired just about three days before Shanna left. 
Um, so we're at about half capacity right now in the office. Um, the staff that is left has stepped up and um, have been extraordinary in taking on more work and being very helpful. So I want to um, give them a pat on the back for that. We also um, have a contractor uh, on board to help with some of the plan reviews. Uh, his name is Gerald Coogan. Um, you may have noticed his name on the staff reports that you got. Um, we're still working. Uh, you know, obviously he's got to learn our ways. Um, and I, I think I missed a couple of things on the staff reports when I reviewed them uh, and edited them. But uh, Jerry uh, is at the office right now, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, mostly Wednesdays, occasionally Tuesdays, to do those plan reviews. Um, he's doing planning board plan reviews, minor site plan plan reviews. Um, he is helping to prepare the zoning board packets for completeness. Um, and he might be helping with the special events and motorcycle review um, uh, applications. Um, for the most part, I've been doing them, but uh, he might step up and take on some of that work. Um, so hopefully by next month, we'll have some of those kinks worked out and the staff reviews should uh, have everything where they should be for you guys. Um, if you have any questions about that, yeah, please how's let the me know. How's the search going? I I don't know. The, the oh, posting PDA, closed yeah. on April 8th. Um, if you have questions, I would recommend that you direct them to Mr. Myers. I have a question. Mm -hmm. well, I spoke with Chris Snow because I was on the zoning board first. She told me she had been hired by the temporary company for a while. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? Um, Chris was a full employee before she retired. Um, we do not have a, a, a temp zoning technician right now. Um, so Jerry's, Jerry's helping with a little bit of that, but for the most part, um, my, I'm, I'm doing a fair amount of the work. Kalina's doing quite a bit of the work. Um, we're all pitching in to answer customer questions. Um, Paul uh, Merritt in the code department is going to start assisting with writing some zoning violation letters just to kind of spread the work a little <coughs> bit because we are spread pretty thin. I'm personally um, uh, <coughs> knowledgeable about Jerry. He's worked as a consultant for the Planning Commission for uh, many years and has uh, developed, uh, he was the staff person responsible for the comprehensive economic development strategy, SEDS document that applies to the, to the region. And secondly, he did the uh, uh, Granite State Futures Project, which uh, applies to the entire area too, which has been incorporated with the other planning commissions. So he's extremely, um, extremely uh, competent, and, and I think we're very fortunate that he was available to be a consultant to uh, Brandy at, at this time. He may uh, be here at the June 1st meeting. Um, we did get um, a number of plans in today for review, so um, he may be at the June 1st meeting to, because he will be the one doing the main review of it to speak to and give the recommendation or the report. We'll see how that works out. So you may see him. And he'll be, uh, he'll be with us uh, if the Langley Cole project is, is uh, presented to us. Because that, as you all know, that's that's a significant elephant. Excellent. Anything else you'd like um, to? Yes. Um, the master plan, I kind of want to give you guys an update on where we are with that. We now have draft chapters for economic development, um, natural resources, a uh, first blush draft chapter of the uh, transportation section, and a very rough, uh, very, very rough draft chapter for the land use section. Um, those four chapters will be the topic of discussion at the um, Community Action Summit, which will be held on Monday, May 23rd. Um, I just uh, nailed down the dates and made the announcements. I'll be sending emails and invitations to everyone. Um, Monday, May 23rd, from 5.30 to 8 p.m. That will be at the Hewitt Technical Center. Um, if you haven't been there, um, I went there for the first time uh, last week to check out the space, and it is um, a very nice um, facility. Um, I think it'll be a great opportunity to <coughs> get the community in there for folks who haven't seen it as well. Um, so we'll be discussing those four topics at this Community Action Summit. We're calling it a Community Action Summit because we're actually going to start talking about 
action items. We're actually going to come up with a to-do list that will go in the master plan that will tack on to those four chapters about what we as a city, what actual things we want to do to accomplish our goals that have been laid out. Um, again, I'll send you guys um, official invitations, but it is up. If you're on Facebook, um, Reimagine Laconia posted it on Facebook. Um, we're asking people to register on, on, on Eventbrite. You don't have to. We just kind of want to get a head count. Um, so if you could do that and invite people and encourage people, that would be great. Um, the after that event, uh, at some point we will start discussing the last three chapters, um, which will be housing, community services and facilities, and historic and cultural resources. Those last three, those are the last three chapters, and once those are done, the entire document will be brought to you as a board for your approval and acceptance. And once the uh, it comes before us, and uh, the last page is a signature page of each member of the planning board. So I w I would like to ask if you could, uh, mm -hmm. if your schedule allows, to be there on the 23rd, to uh, stay actively involved in this project, because your name's going to be on the line. If you have any questions or you want a preview of the draft chapters or anything like that, let me know. I'll be happy to send them to you. Um, one, uh, two more things I just want to touch base on. Just recently, the state changed an RSA about um, accessory dwelling units, uh, which we here uh, in our zoning ordinance refer to as accessory apartments. Um, right now, our, our ordinance uh, limits the size of an accessory apartment to 400 square feet. Um, the RSA uh, changes that um, to a ratio that can be adopted by the city and a bunch of other rules. Um, that comes into effect June 1st of next year, 2017. So at some point, um, you all will be seeing a revised uh, section of the ordinance on that topic um, sometime in the next mm, six, eight, nine months, depending on how things go. Other than defining square footage, does it de yeah, define what it should contain? Um, there's there's a few things um, about where it can be located on the property that you can choose the, the music municipality can choose to incorporate or not um, things like uh, uh, who may or may not live there uh, what your limitations are for that um, so it could be a separate dwelling you're saying separate building it, it no, could it be located building, same building it could well, be I thought it would be but I'm, uh, I does not know what I'm hearing it may yeah. I have to look through you yeah. know we'll have okay. to see how that works out I think what will happen is is um, my guess is you guys as the board will request that the zoning task force take a look at that mm -hmm. um, my reading of the regulations that. is that if the municipality <coughs> allows for on the same piece of property a separate unit, like a standalone garage with the uh, the uh, dwelling unit yeah. above it, it's it's our call as to whether we will allow that within the city or not. But attached to the actual building itself, uh, the RSAs dictate what will be done. I wonder if they'll allow it in condominium units. We'll have to explore that. I just wanted to give I you guys. You said single family dwellings. You know? I think it does have to be single yeah, family okay. dwellings. Um, but but we'll explore that. I just wanted to let you guys know that that was coming down the, the pipe. Um, that's been a hot topic of discussion, uh, lately. So, um, and I think that's it. Okay. John, did you? Yeah, you know, sometimes you get good thoughts on the drive home, but I know you were struggling with the communication <coughs> for uh, Eversource, and yes. I recalled the thing we did with the water utility, and you may have already thought of it, but I figured rather than keep it to myself, if you were to write a letter to them stating that they're not to deviate from any approved site plan unless the property owner uh, shows them an approved amendment or something of that nature and copy it to the PUC. Usually when I'm dealing with the utilities, a copy to the PUC and a record gets their attention much more than it does a letter from me. So I just thought I'd make that suggestion to you while you have your discussion on what to do. Hey, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, excellent. Then liaison reports the Planning Commission. Uh, do any of you have elm trees? Excuse me, ash trees. There is a borer coming up through. It started uh, in other parts of the country. It's coming up through Concord, and we are in a quarantine area here. And that, in essence, what it will mean is that all ash trees are going to be killed by this uh, insect. So that the there's only one injectable solution, and it's like $12 for every inch 
of, uh, of diameter. It's wickedly expensive to do it. And so the, um, the, the main way of slowing this predator down is that there is a regulation that firewood cannot be moved more than five miles from its origin. Mm. Because this insect can survive in firewood. And if you move the firewood, you cut the tree down here and you take it up to Moultonboro, you <coughs> place it in Moultonboro, you could be infecting Moultonboro. <coughs> so it's ash trees. And it's a terrible thing. They uh, showed pictures of, of towns that just obliterated beautiful street trees, phew, gone. And not only do you lose the tree, you stand the cost of removing the tree, mm. which is Why a double. Why is that not new to me? I mean, I thought this book was out five, six years ago. It's been out for a while. It's, it's, it's been coming, and they discovered it in Concord, and then it's moving into New Hampshire. But weren't there some preventive type of things that the communities was so going to do? No, it's you know, only this injection. Like, I mean, no. They cut down the trees and burn them. That's all. That's, that's the only way they do? try I to get rid of them. Yep. Okay. So ash trees, we're going to hear more about it, I'm sure, as, as it moves. But Belknap County is a quarantined area because of our proximity to Concord. And so if you have any ash trees, you're going to lose them. And please don't lug them very far. Uh, that's about it. Any from the Conservation Commission? Um, the con sure. <laughs> um, all right. So Marnie Schultz and Lisa Morin assisted with the annual Girl Scout Earth Day event at the Laconia Transfer Station on April 23rd. They spoke about pollinator plantings and assisted with some additional plantings to enhance the pollinator garden already in place. The CONCOM is working closely with Public Works to GPS all invasive plants at the transfer station uh, to show them on the education kiosk, which is due to be installed soon. So when you go to the transfer station, you'll be able to pull up a map and see what we've got going on. Um, the Conservation Commission is also working closely with the Belknap Conservation District, um, and they are working with the Key Club volunteers uh, in early May to plant a rain garden at Tardiff Park. So that'll be a really neat installation so folks can go and see uh, what a rain garden looks like and how they might want to think about putting something like that on their property. Um, so when residents have questions on rain gardens, they can go take a look at it and see how it works. Um, a joint guilford Laconia Conservation Commission public hearing will take place on Wednesday, May 18th. Um, they're going to present the final results of the Black Brook Geomorphological and Watershed Study, um, which, as you know, has been an ongoing project uh, that they received a pretty sizable grant for. Um, so that's a very exciting uh, step for them. Um, this was uh, undertaken to protect water quality in Pagas Bay, which, as you know, is our drinking water. Um, the Conservation Commission uh, will also be working with the Winnipesaukee Watershed Association uh, to study and combat the spread of the cyanobacteria plumes in preparation for potential plumes this summer. Thank you. The, um, the Blackbrook study, I went to the, <coughs> their meeting when they had a preliminary presentation. It is absolutely fascinating how far that dang brook goes back up in uh, through uh, Guilford and up into the mountains. And um, what has happened that causes this shootout into Pagas Bay, which is state water. So we've got Guilford is involved, Laconia is involved, and the state's involved. Is that if you if you take like a garden hose and you put your thumb over it, a weak stream becomes strong. Well, that's what's happened to this brook as it's come down through past Lowe's and and past the bank and past CVS. They've got culverts. They've got this. They the bank size has gone from this to this, and it's it's constraint. And that thing is whipping through there, and what needs to be done is uh, more of a natural uh, revision back to that you need to have wider areas so that when the water uh, rushes down through springtime or, or whatever uh, flooding conditions, it can spread out and it deposits this stuff on the banks and then it recedes back into its channel and goes down and, and that would keep all this stuff from going out into Pagas Bay. Are the, which are is the culverts the, for that? Are they, they owned by the city? They're owned by a whole variety of people. Uh, when, when you look at it, it's extremely complex. Well, we've that, gone through that drainage situation in depth, and it started from the, starts up with the uh, 
Walmart is up in that area. Yeah, even beyond it. Mm-hmm. Walk was beyond mm-hmm. it. Was the, you know, that's up near uh, near, near uh, Lily Pond. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, so they reassessed the drainage from that those two developments, CLOs and whatever. So a lot of it had to do with that and their ability to slow it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, where some of it is basically. Uh, Guilford, we really didn't have too much of an impact on that, but what we did do with the expansion on Walmart, we had them look at the other side of it, which was uh, Lily Pond, and drain out in that area, because there is a wetland there anyway, but some people were reluctant to drain into Lily Pond, I mean that wetland area, but ultimately they, that was partly the solution. But it all stems from the development of it. I think certain holding areas and stuff like that were basically undersized over the years uh, when were de- those were designed. So and Walmart did contribute, uh, t- I believe it was $10,000 to this study. Yeah. And, and other businesses along there did too, but it's, <coughs> ver- it's very complex. It's uh, been a great collaboration between the two, between us and Guilford. Yeah. Now the, the issue will be once, once they have determined which they have, what's causing the problem. The issue is going to be what the devil to do about it. There's so many uh, property owners involved. And, and, and a motivation for a property owner to make a substantial investment is like, where is their return going to be on that investment? So it's, 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 uh, it's very important. But if you can't attend it, it, it would be good because it's done very professionally. Uh, City Council David Bounds is not here. He called in. Uh, he had another commitment this evening. Other business. Is this where we can talk about? If you would like to. Yeah, I think we would like to. What uh, this was interesting. The comments that the uh, lawyer made here of us. Uh, if we decide to ask or direct a letter be sent to Eversource, a copy of it be sent to the PUC. I think that's very good. That's their regulator. May I say something? Yeah. You know, I feel bad for these guys, but the reality is they dropped the ball, in my mind, because you can't just make a major <coughs> on a plan that you guys approved and by somebody saying, oh, yeah, we talked to everybody and everything's cool. You know, that's Bush League. Yes. No, but you're trying to work it's it's the ask for forgiveness what hap- later. No, what, ha- no, what happens is a plan is done. <coughs> We, no, we I, I, let me I get explain to you what the process. Yep. A plan is done. Yep. We look at it. It looks good. We approve it, whatever. Then it has another leg to it. It goes to, ultimately, it goes to the power company. Mm-hmm. They come up with their overlay on that, supposedly their overlay. But sometimes they just implement it. That's a, that was a field change. Yeah, but they but no, no not, just, mm, but, not necessarily. But either way, they changed it. It's up to the right. It's mm-hmm. up to the developer to say. Okay, you want to make a change? Let me do what I got to do, which is come back and get the waiver. No, I'm, no, I agree with you. If you wake up and the poll's there, this is what his situation. No, but they didn't wake up and it was there. That they they, they like had a said, conversation. That, they that didn't happen that. one day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were fast, but that's a couple of days. And th- again, for the developer, I mean, we've all been, well. I'm sure a lot of us have been in that situation where somebody says, "Oh yeah, don't worry about it. It's cool." It's, you know, I go through it all the time in my job and somebody says yeah it's all set don't worry about it and I but I gotta have proof of that yeah so no, that's really I, the I bottom agree. line you know the other side this of the, the, other side for of the, two, the letter situation. says specifically from the power company they did it so as not to delay the project mm-hmm. well he's already got tenants in working under a temporary CFO he needed to get those tenants in there yeah. so he would not go, he didn't want the power company to go to DES and get a permit so uh, I think I kind of have to agree with Charlie that they, they're a bit complicit in this whole thing. But it, so, but it sounds yeah. like it was a good thing not to go to, to DES because this was the best formula for not disturbing that wetland. I believe you can make a 90 degree turn well, with a power an line electrician underground this. with a junction box. So yeah. they, they bury those junction boxes. I, I would caution you all against discussing the situation regarding the waiver request too, too much because you had the public hearing and you made a decision. No, we're not when, but we're talking about as far as Eversource. Yes, yep, okay. so certainly discuss, you know, how you may want to address that. I, I, without I, just, I just think that, you know, this group here, when you when you make 
when you give out the okay for stuff, they need to just be really sure that if there's any changes, no matter who it's from, ever source or public works or some water company, that they've got to they've got to make sure before that goes forward, even if it's going to delay them or whatever, they've got to come back. They ask for emergency meetings, right? Haven't you had that? No? Okay. They just That they, can be. Yeah, no, no, it can very well be. So yeah. They've just got to come back and, and be You know, I think, I think you're on to something. I think what it should, you know, maybe what we got to hone in on is from the point on which we approve something, and then they go to an Eversource or whoever they go to, even the water, okay. and then they do their alteration to it, or they say, we're going to zig instead of zag, and, everybody, mm -mm -mm, and they do it. I'm not sure what... What, what we have in the system that flags this to us or does not allow them to do it. That's I been, know, but that, I know, I'm just saying that's what we got to. The guy says, oh yeah, we talked to somebody from yeah. the city. No, but that's yes. been a way of life for these people. Okay. Maybe it's part of our institutional knowledge here too that the next time a subdivision comes in with uh, with an underground utility plan, mm -hmm. we uh, grill them and ensure that uh, Eversource has signed off on this prior to our approval. Or they know that it doesn't matter. They can if they can make the field change. Mm -hmm. Well, they not have to come back to us. No, no. Eversource doesn't come back. Those other people yeah, have to come back. Absolutely. So Eversource makes the change. Doesn't necessarily tell the developer in time. The developer's on the hook. He's got to come back to you. Eversource is, is off the hook. Well, they they were never on the hook. It's not their project. Perhaps we can do this. Perhaps we can ask Brandy to talk with our city manager and our, our, our council expressing what we want to do prior to making it a, a formal motion so that we can get their guidance as to how to, to do this, how to keep Eversource on the hook, that they're not to uh, deviate from an approved plan without an authorization from the city. But guys are the ones on the hook. Yes. Eversource is working for them. They're paying Eversource. Yeah, no, no. M my concern is that we have so many applicants and that he may home in and not do this again, but we've got Charlie, yes, we've right. got Tom, we've right, got right. Dick, we've well, got Harry. Just, and yeah. if we communicate to Eversource. When they, when they come forward, don't you tell them that, that you tell them. If you make any deviation to this, you got to come back. No matter whose fault the deviation is. It, right? Um, well, that's no, implied. No, no. We have. Those administrative, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they can do things administratively on well, site, yeah, but, but and I think that's where so some of this falls into all of that. I'm, so we you know, do have in our know, regulations that changes. You're in the right church, you got to get to the right pew in the right seat. But you're we do have in our close. we do <laughs> have a regul we do have in our site plan regulations that field changes are acceptable. Mm. Um, they do need to be approved by at the very least the. The department, uh, yeah. the city departments, um, and you would do that in writing when they're brought. Yes, yes, and when they're brought to our attention, um, mm -hmm. at our discretion, we will either approve said field change and say we'll capture in the as built, or we say no, this is big enough that you need to go to the planning board. Usually, it's things like you move to catch basin three feet, or you redesigned a swale, or something like that, um, because once you get on there, you know, the site maybe might not be exactly as you engineered for. Um, so it is in there. Um, you know, I guess uh, sometimes we get new developers uh, who maybe aren't, you know, quite as familiar with our process. That's not, you know, excuses, but it is what it is. Um, so we try to keep lines of communication open. Um, Scott McPhee um, goes once a week to all of our active construction sites and checks things, and that's how we found this out. He was on his regular Friday site visit, um, and he came back uh, with a report for us. Um, so for the most part, if things are happening, we do catch them within a week or so. Um, you know, so we try to, we as a department try to stay on top of things. Um, it doesn't mean we're going to catch things, you know, Right away, if maybe, the, maybe the power company. Uh, <coughs> but I mean, cause these people pay a lot of money to the power company to do what they do. Maybe they got to provide a bond or something that they're going to adhere to the. Plan. Well, uh, also at the same time, a, a developer could say, "All right, if we, they could make a decision right there on the spot and be like, yeah, in order to do this, this is going to cost another hundred thousand dollars because what you had in a plan.' Yeah, that's always and, and they yeah. could be like, hey." Put the lines across. Yeah, that's always okay. You know, so it's it. That's where it comes down to. Whoever's inspecting this would say, "All right, we got to stop 
come in and then that's why I'm, when you're looking at a wave a waiver like this you have to judge it on the merits of that um, and, and in this case I feel like we had too much hearsay in a conversation I don't want to discuss that but how do we avoid hearsay we didn't you mentioned setting a precedent I wouldn't want to set a precedent and saying like what kind of proof do you need to have that this would have been a hardship and that the mistake was made you know, we should also require proof of, of that kind well, of you understand or, or that could have been done as a case well, before it got there's here. There's a bond they put up. Yeah. Every developer has to provide a bond. And that is 10% plus 10% of the project implementation, the road, the infrastructure. <coughs> now, if we, if we felt that he didn't do something or a developer didn't do something, and we want to correct it. We can exercise that bond. The bond is usually a letter of credit from a bank, or it's a physical bond. We got the physical bond aspect. Letter of credit, of credit or cash? Huh? Letter of credit or cash? Well, we had a bond thing that we voted on. Check your notes. We voted on the bond because I was an adamant about that, and we did that within the last year. We came out with a bond, allowing a bond as long as the bonding company was from the state of New Hampshire. So double check that. Okay. That's an element. Yeah, it was something like yeah. that. We had so a they discussion. Can put a I don't remember the results. Um, it's only for street acceptance. I'm sorry. It's only for street acceptance. I think it was in. The, I think it was during the street acceptance discussion. Yeah, right. Only. And it was the city that that decided it's the that. The city. We didn't decide it. We so can. We, we can change do that. We change that. We change that to a bond because we would say a for bond. For street acceptance, right? No, for on no on the project we would say, da 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 da. We approve that bond provided by a given date that was a misnomer that misled people to think they could provide a bond what they were really saying is you need a letter of credit so we had a couple of hurdles with that and then we went back and we said well we're going to do a bond we can do a bond the problem with the bond was at the time we did bonds in this city most towns do bonds we didn't because there was a, a situation that had gone on they went to exercise the bond and they were out of time and what they did town. was they had to go to North Carolina to get there on time, and they couldn't get there within the 12 hours, so we ended up coming up short as a, as a city. So what we should have done in that case, shame on us, was think about what we wanted to do and get our plan in place two or three days before we called on the bond. But we do have a bond. We do Legally, we do have a bond. Double check the, the minutes of the meetings. That is what we voted on with about a year ago. But Bill, we can design that bond. So it's due upon what we say. You don't want to wait. You don't want to go through this whole ring and roll all over yeah. again. Because I went through that once before, and I realized from now on, you make it. Yeah, I think them. we. As soon as as soon as they come to us and say they're doing this, and and the plan says this, then you should be able to call on it right then and there to get it corrected. If in fact they don't fulfill the contract, we'll say the plan. We can call in the bond, and we can do it ourselves. For example, if a, if, a, if a developer does not put the top coat on the road, or he doesn't put a sidewalk in, or he stops halfway through the, the project, we can call in that bond, and we have our, say, DPW, whoever, they're going to let it out, source it to, and then they can implement the, the cost, the, whatever is the value of that bond. It could be 50000 it could be 60000 but they could then take that next, they have the right to use that money. Which we okay. have done in the past for site stabilization. Well, that's yep. So we're talking the same thing. So the bond. Do you want to get yeah. involved with running underground ground lines through wetland? No, you're trying to protect. Uh, you're yeah. trying to protect. What, um, you're trying I'm to protect. Sorry. You know. I'm not sure the bond really applies to this one, only because Why? the EverSource acted as a subcontractor to the developer. Well, if, if but, but, but wait, wait, wait. The contract. The subcont let him finish. It's their monopoly. He couldn't go to anybody else. No, he had no that. choice. Right, so. That. The subcontractor basically screwed the developer. Why? Because he was the only game in town, and he does exactly what he wants right. to do. So, so I'm not sure that by attaching the bond, we do ourselves any favor. It's a bond not to the individual contractor, could he, could he but, but to the power I don't think we, no, we don't. I don't think we do ourselves any favor by making it even tougher on the developer because he's got well, no control. Richard. He's got no control over yeah. over EverSource. If we don't put our draw a line in the sand with EverSource. They're going to keep doing it to the developers, and we're going to get frustrated. We're going to start laying on more regulations on top of what we already do. It's just going to make it harder for developers. So the question is, what's the how, how do we determine what the land, the, 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 the drawn I think, those I, I think, the I think Warren's suggestion is right, is what we do is we have the city manager contact our attorney 
and find out what he thinks we can do. And if it means writing a letter to the PUC in protest, <coughs> utilities going to listen to that more than they're going to listen to us. What yeah, I think that's an important step. What are we protesting? We're what? protesting the fact that they changed the conditions of a site plan approval. Uh, all we can do is trust what he's saying. We don't know. But we have to assume he's a reasonable man. Well, he hired an attorney and an engineer to come back and represent him have to, to try to solve it. The developers have to see something work. in writing. Very expensive. What well, you, what well what we'll do in sequential uh, subdivisions here before the board, all of us <coughs> are frustrated by this. And, and as we uh, develop our uh, approval, here, we'll add in there. We'll just make that stronger language. And anything that's going to have underground uh, uh, utility support will just require that Eversource is signed off on that plan prior to. And well, if there's a change, if, it, if they want to change, the applicant has to come back to us. Well, they have to. They have to have something in writing. If not, they yes. have to have something in writing that yes. somebody has approved that. Yes, change. everything has to be in writing that, that we, we generate. I mean, can we also say somewhere in the usually when program. they bring in the drawings, there's a plan that shows where those underground utilities are going. So did we approve something? Uh, yeah. Again, if yes. even if we approved it, it but, but, but my question is, did yes, we did. It we was page fifteen yeah. or something. Yeah, like did that. we approve it going through the wetlands? No. no. Is it, no. Does you it know? make sense for us to say in our approvals, and maybe it's not necessary, maybe it's implied, that the developer, without limitation, without exception, is responsible for the proper work of his subcontractors, whether it be a utility, a monopoly, whatever. Of course. Yeah, but do we need to say that? Because he basically came to us, and we assume he's a reasonable man. He said, you know, the utility that made that decision on their own, I didn't really have much to say about it. They said they talked to the town. It was okay. I'm just saying belt and suspenders, if we say specifically in the approval, <coughs> don't come back to us. You are fully responsible for your subcontractors, period. Would you think about that, too, and, and ask our... Uh, I'll check with legal counsel. Legal counsel as to what we can do to... I would think they would be. Because we, we need, as we're doing, we're learning. You know, you, you fall in a bucket and you learn how not to fall in that bucket again. Yeah, you know, but it's, it is funny because, well, we won't talk about it. How can it you... I, I, it's hard to... There's going to be a... There's going to be a punitive thing that they self-police in some manner at some level. Yeah. Because we're not going to be able to police that. We're not. Because the bottom line is someone goes out on site, whether it's the power company or the contractor, someone goes on and says, put the pole over here, well, I'll worry about it later on. So you, you, if it's punitive at some level, I know. and if it's the power company, the power company's going to say, well, we can't do that because did you get, Mr. So-and-so, did you get approval on that? for Your, you know, your plan shows this, but now... There's got to be a way that they self-police because we're not we, we're not on site. It all can happen in a day, like you said. Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's one other thing, and we and maybe shame on us is we kind of fall back on our on our our site plan regulations probably more than we should. We should have looked at it and said, okay, we want the power underground. That's what the regulation says. But there's a wetland over here. Do we really want to make them do that? Well, that was my question. Do we approve that? We no, have. if you no, no. it no, wasn't no. an approval. No. It was just a requirement. It was to go the other way. But in order to go the other way, they had oh, to do okay. this wicked so, angle. So what we approved was the way they should have done it. Yeah. But yeah. as you all know, there's a delicate yeah. uh, under case law planning board members and planning board themselves not being experts in the particular yeah. field. Right. We have to give have to deference to the certified engineers, to the certified power people. There has to be deference to that. Yeah, and they agree to it. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you've heard it all. Yeah. Uh, would you come back uh, next meeting with some kind of a draft letter? Well, you won't be here. I, I will. No. That's why we moved it. That's why oh, we moved oh, it. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, I will do some research and, and see what I can figure out for, for you guys. Excellent. Okay. Uh, anything else on this subject? No? I, okay. I was just going to say to something like this, too, this was an obvious catch. A lot of things like this are buried and you can't find them. So it, it was something that they were able to catch in a week. Yeah. So it, it's a sore thumb. Yeah. So think of all those things that always do get buried. This could have very well been thought, thought through. That I mean, it was a lot of hearsay, and that's the only thing that that is irritating about it that you didn't have exactly an expert opinion you had a lot of i'm sorry what what can we do at this point you know and and that's the precedent we don't want to be in that's right. yes 
Yeah, yeah. and, and that was my only concern cash. about an issue like this. And if again, it goes back to okay, let's if we look at each issue separately and say, would this waiver make, uh, would it be logical? And I think they should go through the, the whole, whatever it would have taken to get a waiver is what we should expect as a board for the original. If they're going to make a mistake like that, they need to do all the background research as if it wasn't the original waiver at that moment. That would be my only concern. Did do they have, have all that background to come here for this? We have another one coming up that we, we have a wind of. <coughs> mm -hmm. Is the board going to have all the litany of events that took place with that particular one? Well, yeah. Brandy, well no, we're not discussing it, and I'm not discussing yeah. it, but I mean... That's Brandy's role as well, the no, uh, interim uh, director to instruct them as to what is necessary before they come no, to I us. No, mean, I mean uh, the, the other one that's coming up. Yeah, it's, it's, her, it's her role to we instruct have the, them. You must do this, you have to do that. No, but do we have the historical... Cause that's we don't coming, have anything. We don't have coming any, to the board? We have no application yet. Okay, but when it comes to the board, will we have the historical sequence of events, what, what we know, what we don't know, who try to contact who, all that kind I of stuff. I can certainly try to get that, that from them. I mean, to helpful. be entirely honest, we tried to get a lot of information, you know, uh, about this other one. Yeah. Sometimes we have to bring you guys what we have, mm -hmm. otherwise no, it's stalled at our level. Yeah. Wait, so. We're not looking at you, I'm saying. No, no, I understand. I mean, I will do my best to um, ask that they prepare it as if um, it was a before the fact instead of an after the fact. I mean, it'd be nice if they got a letter that said, well, you know, we did talk to so-and-so, say, from the <coughs> f yep. Yep. from the utility company, or they have a name associated with it. That is really, you know, that will bridge the gap, I think. Charlie? I'd love to have the answer, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. What the cost difference was between underground 90 degree turn all that stuff and the pole and the wires all oh, that was a lot more than 28 that 000. was easier on the power company <laughs> of no course no. easier on, somebody's paying for that of course so again my question is the power company's just giving you a bill i'm just curious what the cost difference was between the two yeah if there well, was the power company you prepaid yeah well pre no, that's a good point there's only so far we can no, get no, it just, yeah just, no, just, no no i agree with you i've been through a lot of this and you prepaid they give you a price on your plan when the check arrives you they pay the them and then they come out and do the work well if there's a big difference in the job i'd be looking to well, say well there's a big difference what, if what's the difference here am i getting a refund? well i would think there's a big difference in the cost yeah, that's looking, my own personal opinion i'd be looking for a refund otherwise if there's <coughs> a big difference they might be looking for a bigger bill from you or check from you uh -huh. well that's all Just well why don't we uh this is good why don't we move uh last subject is uh approval of the minutes of uh, april 5th do I have a uh, motion to accept the minutes of April 5th? So moved. Second? I'll second it. Motion made, second. Any discussion? See none. I'll call the question. All those in favor, say uh, I'll raise the right hand because we're on television. Okay. I'm abstaining. I okay. am too. Two abstains. Okay. You don't uh, under under uh, four enough. under the rules and regulations. I'm not sure if it's ours or the state's, but just you don't have to abstain because if you reviewed them, you can vote on them. You don't. No, have but to. I wasn't here to. Yeah. How do I know they're true? Yeah, that's, that's, here. That, that's fine. Um, we have enough to approve. One, two, three. That's only four. One, two, three, four. And it doesn't make any difference if we don't approve them. That's the other thing. That's, that's part good of the point regulation. Too. Well, so you need you need wait, four. We're, to, okay. So well, 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 can did I anybody vote on them if I wasn't a voting yeah, member absolutely. at the time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, you were here. I'll, I'll vote. Yeah. Okay. Then we have. We have. Yes. Oh, we have a vote. Thank I'll you I'll very verify. much. <laughs> uh, anything else to come before this august body? This was. Uh, there were several softballs tonight, and this was a uh, difficult one uh, that uh, that we addressed. And I thank you all very much for that. Uh, then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? See, now I'll call the question. All those in favor? Thank you. And thank you all very much for doing this. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>